Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Checkpoint's Head of Cloud Security, Itai Greenberg. About 150 years ago, companies, the factories, they had to change their infrastructure. They used the steam engine, and then came the electric motor, the electric engine. And you know, like moving from a steam to electricity, changing this infrastructure, this is a big investment to change this whole thing. Uh, some factories did this change quite fast. They want to be agile, and they were competitive. They were able to survive this revolution. Well, even more, there were quite a bit of steam engineers that had to see this revolution coming, and in order for them to stay relevant, they had to understand what does it mean to become an electric engine engineer. They knew how to deal with the steam, but to become an electric engine engineer and to stay relevant, it requires some effort. We are now in the same time of kind of history where organizations need to change their infrastructure. They are using today data center, but in order for them to stay agile, in order for them to stay competitive, they need to move into the cloud. And what happens right now that in the data center, everything takes weeks. But me as a consumer, when I'm using my mobile device and I want a new application, it only takes me a minute. I don't need to wait several weeks or months for me to get my new application on my mobile device. But then I'm coming to the work, and I'm this kind of finance guy or HR guy, and I'm contacting the, the IT department and asking them, I need this new application, and tell me to wait so long. The cloud comes to close these gaps from weeks, from months to minutes. So please join, join me today to a journey how we can help you customers to move into the cloud and to do it in a more secure way. The cloud is already here. Um, according to IDC, we see that 80% of the enterprises already have a clear cloud strategy. We see that the budget is going into the cloud. 40% of the budget in 2018 will be cloud-based. And still, security even today is the number one inhibitor that prevents customers to move their mission-critical applications, their line of business applications, into the cloud. Why is that? When we look at the cloud, what are the fundamentals of the cloud, we see that the cloud is a shared environment. Not only we are running different type of customers on the same piece of hardware, but even me, my customer, I have a lot of applications that now in the big data era, they want to share information. They want the finance, the HR, all the applications to communicate with each other. And when they communicate with each other, so the malware and the bad things can move from one application to another. It's a connected environment. It is connected to the internet. And so in this environment, I'm still running the same type of Windows applications, Linux applications, and they are exposed to, the, to those type of modern attack. And it's a very, very dynamic environment meaning that applications come and go, they grow, they shrink, they move. This is how it actually happens. And we need to be able to understand how this cloud works. And those are the reasons that securing the cloud requires a different type of approach. What is this? Let me give you some example. For example, if I'm, if I'm adding a new application today to my data center, security is a showstopper. I need to open a ticket, I need to wait several days, if not weeks, for this application to function. For someone to create the rule in the firewall to allow it to communicate. Well, in the cloud, I want the security to be an enabler. I want the security to understand that there is a new application and immediately secure it. When I want to secure my data between the applications inside the cloud, today, in the legacy data center, it's almost impossible. It's very cumbersome. I need to redesign my networks and reconnect things in the cloud when I'm using a technology which is called SDN, which allows me to easily manage the network. 
I can insert security inside the data center in a very efficient and simple way, automatic way. And the last example would be that if I want to secure application that grows and shrinks, I have this kind of uh, Black Friday where I need to service so many types of consumers if I'm a retailer. Well, if I'm buying appliance, I need to plan ahead how big the appliance needs to be. I need to plan two, three, four years ahead. And if this appliance doesn't handle the load, I need to replace this appliance. And usually, when I buy the appliance today, I will only consume maybe 20, maximum 30% of its CPU power. When I'm using virtual security, I can auto-scale. I can auto-scale up, and I can auto-scale down. And I'm only paying for what I'm using. And I can utilize the compute up to 60, 70% from day one. So what are the key steps for you guys when you are moving into the cloud? How do you secure your cloud? So please join me, join me and see what are those steps. Number one, when you move your application to the cloud, be aware that, again, you will have Windows, Linux, database type of application that are prone for all those modern types of attacks. And the cloud vendors, even though they're doing a phenomenal job in building this infrastructure, they are not responsible to secure your data and your application. If someone will hack into your application, it's your responsibility. They are not liable for this. It's not like you are putting the money in the bank and the bank secures your money. And therefore, it's not enough to secure this cloud with basic firewall or access control. We need to put the most advanced threat prevention technology in front of my cloud to secure it. Number two, my applications inside the data center, inside this modern cloud, want to communicate with each other. But we need to do it in a secure way. We need to micro-segment my cloud. Yet, we want to do it in such a way that we are allowing the applications to communicate with each other. So one can claim we are adding more security into the cloud. Probably we are making it more complex. Well, the answer is no. We can add more security inside the cloud and still make it easy, still make those applications communicating with each other in a very simple way. Yet, we need to make sure that malwares between applications are not propagating. We need to prevent one application that is infected from infecting the other applications inside the cloud. And we need to do it automatically. We are going to move to the cloud, and we will still have our own premise, and we may have more than one cloud solution. So it's imperative that my security for this hybrid cloud environment will still be simple. I want to maintain a consistent policy across all my cloud applications, no matter where they are. I don't want to have one policy or one security policy for public cloud, for AWS, a different one for Azure, a different one for my private cloud, for my VMware environment. I want to know that I'm managing it all from one place, and I know for sure that it's the same type of policy no matter where the application lives. And this is probably the most important thing. The cloud is a very dynamic environment. We are moving to the cloud because we want to be agile. Our security must be as elastic and as agile as the cloud. It needs to be auto-provisioned, it needs to auto-scale, and it needs to be adaptive to all those changes. When the application disappears, I need to clean the rules in my firewall. The application grows or moves. I need to know about it and to adapt to this automatically. So this is what we do in Checkpoint. We have VSEC. VSEC is our umbrella, is our strategy for Checkpoint to secure the cloud. Let's zoom in into VSEC. So what are the key three principles of VSEC? Number one, we took all the great technology that we developed on the appliances, all the access control technology from firewall, application control, identity awareness, data awareness, as well as all the advanced threat prevention that we have from IPS, antivirus, sandblast, everything, 
and we move it from a physical appliance to a virtual gateway. Then we developed a lot of intelligence in our gateways, but even more in our management to be able to be adaptive to those changes in the cloud. And we have an architecture, a solution, that span over all the type of cloud environment and solution. You can see here that today, Checkpoint have very strong and tight partnership and integrations with VMware and Cisco ACI. One can think that, yes, we are competing with Cisco, but on the networking level, we are very strong partners of Cisco, and we have very strong solution with them. We have a very, very advanced solution with AWS, Azure, and now we also launched Google and AliCloud. And for the telcos, for the MSPs, and for some enterprise, we have a very strong solution for the OpenStack, together also with Nuage. So we have a very rich ecosystem in the cloud. Now, as I mentioned before, the clouds vendors will not secure your application and data. Yes, they do give you some basic access control rules. But if you really want to protect your application from modern attacks, we checkpoint with VSEC, we give the next generation, the application uh, and data security, advanced threat prevention, and with smart events, we give you the visibility of what is happening in the cloud and the ability to do forensics analysis. We talked before that we want to secure applications inside, between themselves, inside the cloud. So the way we do it is by having this type of integration with SDN. With SDN, we can insert checkpoint between applications inside the cloud in a very simple way, almost in a click of a button. We, they know, those SDN vendors, they know how to push ourselves into the network automatically and we know about what is happening between the application and how to secure the traffic between them. And we do it with advanced threat prevention from Checkpoint. And then, this is what we do on the adaptive side. We are already deployed, we secure the perimeter of the cloud, we secure the traffic between the cloud, but we want to do it in a very agile way. And so, we developed what we call adaptive security technology that allows us to get notifications, insights from AWS, from Azure, from VMware, from Cisco, from OpenStack, from Google, about all those changes that happen all the time. And we know how to adapt to those changes. Without you, the firewall administrators, doing anything in terms of clicking a button, need to deal with tickets, Yet, all the application will always stay secure. And we will allow the developers, the application owners, to move fast. This is how we close the gap from weeks to minutes. So we do it with security that adapts to, appli to application changes. We do it with what we call identity-based security for applications. We have auto-scale technology. You can put us in AWS, for instance, but not only. This is just an example. And when we hit the threshold of a, of a CPU on the virtual gateway, we know how to spin off another virtual gateway and another virtual gateway to handle the load. And when we hit a threshold below some level, let's say 40% on the CPU, we know how to take them away, the gateways, and spin down. So you only pay for what you use. Same goes for VMware and for other cloud vendors, as I mentioned. And the last thing, we don't want you to deal with putting the license on all the virtual gateways. Today, when you buy an appliance, each appliance has its own license. When you buy Checkpoint VSEC, you can have one license to secure all your cloud uh, gateways, the VSEC gateways, with one license that knows how to scale up and scale down, as I mentioned before. So this is our solution. Now, if I, if I want to show one use case, and we have a lot of automations that we developed with VSEC, but just one use case that illustrates how agile it is. This is a component that's called VSEC controller. It lives in the checkpoint management in R80. In this VSEC controller, we developed a lot of small plugins that allows us to integrate with all the cloud vendors. With those plugins, we can now create a policy 
that we are no longer using IP addresses to define rules between applications. We are using the identity of the applications as they've been created by the application owners. We are bringing them, for example, from Cisco ACI. We bring them from NSX. We bring them from VMware. We bring them from all the type of cloud vendors. And now we get three key values. The application owner and the firewall administrator speak the same language. If something goes wrong, the application doesn't need to ask uh, to tell the, the firewall administrator, this is the IP address, this is how it works. Just give me the name of the application. I can find it in the policy. I can find it in the logs. If you change the name, it will change also in the policy. If you change the IP address, it will change automatically in our policy, in all the gateways. You don't even need to, clish, uh, 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 to push the policy. If you delete the application, we get notification, we delete the rule, we clean up the rules. So we know to track the entire life cycle of the application as it was created by the application owner and secure it automatically. In 2016, we had a great success with VSEC. Uh, over 1,000 customers uh, acquired, purchased VSEC and they put it in the different cloud. I want to share with you two nice success stories that we had. The first one is with Zero. Zero is a company that um, providing online accounting services like tax reports. And they have a very large deployment in AWS. Um, they are servicing today 1 million subscribers to do like small businesses that are doing the tax, managing the tax. Checkpoint. We have hundreds of virtual gateways across all this big architecture of, uh, a of uh, zero in AWS, securing all the traffic that comes in and out and between the applications. So this is a very nice and large deployment that we have in AWS. In this example, in this uh, success story, it's a customer that decided to go with a hybrid cloud approach. They still have, it's, a, it's an airline company, and they still have a local data center which they migrate into a private cloud. They use VMware NSX for this. So we secure all the communication and all the traffic on the private cloud. But they also went into AWS and they are developing some application in AWS that needs to be available worldwide. And they are communicating with each other, the private cloud and the public cloud. We secure all their applications in AWS. We secure this hybrid cloud approach. With the Checkpoint Infinity architecture, the cloud is a very important component. Um, you have the mobile, you have the cloud, you have the threat prevention. We know how to look at the entire infrastructure and with the same security principles from one place we manage it all. So this is the story of Checkpoint on the cloud. I have another track session later today where I'm zooming in and I'm showing you how really Checkpoint can take this promise and deliver it with real demos that I will present to you. You're welcome to join me at 1.30. Thank you very much for joining me. Checkpoint will provide you the utmost protection, adaptive security, and security for the entire cloud. Thank you very much.